wealth within. They gave me that feeling of trust. What you learned in the course was just mind-blowing. Amazing. It was phenomenal. It opens your mind up and makes you realise you don't know what you don't know. I've got the tools now. 100% worth it. Definitely get educated. Hello and welcome to Wealth Within's weekly hot stock tips. I'm Philip Tortevsky, Senior Analyst at Wealth Within, and we are Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Every Tuesday night, you can see me on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube alongside two amazing professional traders, Janine Cox and Dale Gillam. In the show, we answer important questions around the stock market, cover lots of great stocks and help you become a better trader. Today, we'll unveil what's hot and what's not for you, our viewers. But before we dive into this week's stocks, I am joined today by Dale Gillam. Welcome back, Dale. Thanks, mate. You've done a good job with my absence. Yes, look, it's been hard work bouncing off a brick wall, but... Um... Well, mate, don't always tell me you had a hard head. <laughs> <laughs> but, I've just uh, spent time drinking and yeah. socialising and eating too much. Yes, you have. You look fresh, you look ready oh, to get you. back into it. Yeah, I am looking back. I mean, the market's been great the mm. last couple of weeks. I mean, obviously, we had that rocky road just mm. before I left where we had that supposed crash. Mm -hmm. you know, and we kept saying, no, it's not, and everybody told us we were idiots. But, yeah. um, hey, if that's what it is, that's what it is. They yes. Say, mm, they say, you know, they say, you know, if you raise your head above a crowd, you know, you'll get tomatoes thrown at you. And I go, great. Well, I've got a better view too. Yes. Um, and I mean, you know, what that, what's that other saying about popularity? But it's not yeah. always the popular choice. But, um, you know, being right is being right, right? Mm. So anyway, I got that completely messed up. But anyway, <laughs> let's get into the uh, market right now. Now on your screen is the watch list of the top 200 ASX stocks. Now, obviously, we are coming into the or pretty much finishing the last week of reporting season. So mm. not uncommon to see these 20, 15, 10% moves in a week. But um, real interesting, Dale, what are you seeing on that list through there? I actually like it. I think it looks good. And, you know, obviously, you know, what we're more interested in on this list is not necessarily, you know, the percentage change over the last week, even because last week, I mean, the market was up, what, half a percent or something. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a big bullish week last week, but the All Lords did close August roughly where it started, yes. which was a good sign from that point of view. So I'm thinking the market's moving up, but looking at, you know, Nanosonic's up nearly 20%. Bigger cheese up 16. I mean, you know, looking at the, those sorts of returns, they're great. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean they're actually going up. And this is down at EDI. It had a big week, as you can see there um, on the chart through there. But, you know, I actually like it. But what I'm more interested in, in here, or what we're more interested in, is these two um, columns where what we want is something that's in the lagging sector and going north east. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to see is lagging northeast. So these are the stocks that I want to see more of because they're the ones that I'm going to put on my watch list for a possible buy. It's actually a really strong indicator to us to stick it on your watch list. And I won't explain it all now to everybody, but every now and again, these are all on an RRG graph, which we bring up from time to time on this. Mm. But this is what I'm more interested in um, and looking at these. But looking at the other end of the, the scale, look at that John's Ling group. And that was going up for a little bit for, before um, more recently, but look at that yeah. big move down. So is that a washout move? So that could give us a bit of um, insights into all of that, but at the moment that looks pretty bearish. You know, Kessian Group down 20, nearly 25, Tab Corp down 20. So you're getting that huge volatility, but it being down 20 last week, I mean, it was already bearish. So that's what we're seeing at the moment. But yeah. what we're waiting for is, is it gonna wash out? and we're gonna start finding some support. But we also do look at some of these stocks and see if what sectors are happening to be moving. Um, and at the moment, we, we've been saying, you know, we want materials to go up, we want energy to go up, we want healthcare to go up, and it's starting to look like that at the moment. Materials, almost flat for last month, financial yeah. still kept going, which was really, really good. But energy looks like it's turning around as well as mm. materials, and if they go up, over the next few weeks, our market's going to make a new all-time moment and start flying. Oh, yeah. I mean, Materials hasn't had two weeks up since, I think, September, if my memory serves me correct, of mm. last year. And we saw that over the last couple of weeks. So, I mean, if, as you said, I'm, I'm with you. If that gets going, then I think that combination, financials, materials, healthcare, then there's no way our market can fall from that um, uh, happening anyway. So what is hot in the market this week? Well, on your screen right now is my hot stock tip for the week, which is Centuria. Capital Limited stock ticker code CNI. Now on your screen is the monthly and weekly charts here, Dale. But I want to start things off on the monthly chart here for Centura. And I mean, really mm -hmm. interesting stock, obviously, uh, in the uh, real estate sector, REIT sector, um, if you will. Um, 
and I've identified this horizontal, I guess, level or range, which is that dollar thirty six to a dollar eighteen. And to me, this has been the most important level in this stock. Obviously, it was near where the stock floated that price. Found a bit of a grants through there, and throughout the history, it's come back to this level, particularly since you know two thousand and seventeen, finding a strong base and you know providing the springboard for most of the major moves since you know that kind of period. And more recently, we came in again in November two thousand and twenty three to test the level. We saw buying mm -hmm. and strong buying at that, and why this one is my hot stock tip because right now. You know, with these stocks that come out of these uh, strong or long-term lows, if you will, it's important to see what happens next. And in terms of what happens next is, do we see an agreement or do we see a build-up um, in, in terms of price? And that is generally shown in these sideways type moves. And that, you know, mm -hmm. seeing those higher bases can give you that indication that, hey, we're ready to explode out. And right now, you know, with the way this market fell through this level, it had the period where buys came in strong during December and January 24. And rather than falling all the way back down like it had done, you know, since the all time high, really, it's found a base literally at half of the mm. previous run up. So speaking a lot of strength to me, and that's why I've got this horizontal line marked at $1.85, two bucks. If it can get through here, then I think we can confirm this as a significant low. The momentum is changing from down to up. And I think upside, further upside is the play moving forward. Um, and then it's just a matter of monitoring it and applying your buy and sell rules to mm. eke out the most of what that upside is going to bring. Look, I agree. And I think this is an interesting example of where it's safe to buy. And that's the difference mm. between what I see a lot of traders do is they trade. They don't actually trade at safe spots. They actually trade at unsafe spots or mm. high risk spots. And really what it is, is because you can see here back in November, it, it was a really nice bar. I mean, we had a range of, you know, over 30 cents on a dollar uh, 20 stock. So that's a big, big move um, through November. So what happens is you see as people, we see traders see that, then they jump in on this bar, mm. uh, the next bar, which is the December bar, and you can see another 37 cent range on a dollar 40 stock. Um, and then they get stuck in this or they get stuck in this downward move and they go, why did I buy? And this is a high risk area to buy because this could be a sucker's rally. And it turned out it's not, mm. but we've seen so many sucker's rallies like this one through here. And you'll see it on stocks all the time where it'll move up, uh, move up a little bit and then it'll go down further again. So this is where I think this is just a real safe place to buy. Mm. But this is also where you get FOMO, people who trade on FOMO. They've seen it move really, really strongly. And if I use this one, you can see how far it moved. There's, what's that, 64%? Mm. And they go, oh, I'm missing out on that. It's going to go another 50%. And then they get stuck in that. So if you're a trader that gets stuck in these sorts of moves, that means your you buy rules are completely wrong mm. or your analysis is completely wrong or it needs a lot of adjusting because um, it's about trading at a safe spot, not just any spot. Um, and to me, that's a really big thing we can pick up from that chart. But I love the stock at the moment. I totally agree. I mean, the, the fact that you're mentioning that that safeness um, really speaks to that uh, experience in terms of finding those best setups, which is what we're all about here. But anyway, that is it for my hot stock tip. Now, we're moving on to a stock that should make you proceed with caution. South 32 stock ticker code S32. Now on your screen is the monthly chart on the left, weekly chart on the right. Now this one is to me, a bullish caution, Dale, and I'll hmm. explain why that is the case. Because, you know, um, for those that do watch our show, our Tuesday night show, we, we dug deep into the material sector and we uncovered that the material sector generally has, um, if you weigh up the top 15 by market cap, the general fall is about 64%. So hmm. anywhere, you know, over 50% is generally considered the limit of the fall for these kinds of stocks. So if we go back to the chart and have a look, you'll see that you know, this particular fall coming since the all-time high is about 49%. Now, I want to zoom this out for you a little. And clearly, this stock has been in a long-term uptrend, you know, since creating that all-time low in December 2016. There was a period in the past where it also experienced similar price action with a big fall or about a 50-odd percent fall. This was about 60-odd percent and resumed back into trend. Now, we've got a 49% fall. We've got this huge horizontal level, which to me is the most, most important yeah. level in terms of price since uh, 2016, we can see how much it gravitates towards this level. Um, and more recently being on a bullish scenario, finding support through there, also finding strong support in February 2024. And what's interesting to me now, because obviously, I mean, the buyers really ate up this stock on the recent touch of um, that $2.78 level, but we did experience a fall. And part of that fall was the news that came out, right? So again, mm. speaking to this event-driven stuff, um, which is not normal market uh, movements, obviously when an event comes 
through, the price moves differently to how it was normally. And what happens next is what's so important to me mm. because then you judge the strength or weakness of, of um, whether this is going to go back into its natural rhythm or whether the characteristics have completely changed based on that news. So we go back to the chart and, and what I mean by that is the option was there, okay, the news came through here, uh, panic, which is normal, increased volatility. But then if you're a trader looking at this, you're going, hang on a second, let me see what it does at this technical level through here mm. because I know there's strong buying. I know historically there's support. Is this going to be an overreaction or has the characteristic completely changed and we're going to you know, rip lower and, and, and move into a long-term downtrend? Right now, I'm not seeing that. Well, I'm not either. And if you look at that big red bar back from July where the news came out, which is basically they just announced a slight downgrade, downgrade, a very slight downgrade, but other things like an only in certain areas of their business, so a slight profit downgrade. I think they, they uh, announced, you know, uh, rises in revenue from copper and a few other different things. But it wasn't enough for that big move. And if we go to the chart, let's bring up and see how big that move actually was. If we put our little tool on it, you can see it opened there. And at one stage, it was down 20%. And that was pretty much almost overnight. It just went, fell out of bed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you're doing a small profit downgrade, why, what the, how does it equate to 20%? But it also backs up what I was talking about before is sometimes you can get in. At the moment, this is proving to be just a dead cat bounce. Mm. That's what I'm seeing mm. at the moment. But we do get a lot of traders or a lot of in, uh, people that try and trade the market. They would have got in right up here and they would have been suffering some losses right now. And obviously they would have panicked through here. So we do see that a lot where people just jumping in at the wrong time. Great stock. And mm -hmm. I, this is looking really good to me um, with this whole, we can see here August, it started here, pushed right down to that support level and then came right back, closed above where it opened. I understand why it's a caution right now because we do need to see a big move up from here. Um, but I like this. Stick this on your watch oh, list. Oh, yeah. Oh, and that's the point. You know, really mm. stick it on there because now it's so important when you see these stocks, they come out after bad news or supposed bad news and they hold up in price. I mean, that's a, you know, really a really important point that you need to consider because if it doesn't want to go any lower after what the market thought was, you know, supposed to take it lower, then there's something in, in that uh, itself, in that analysis. But I'll leave that for you to ponder anyway. But lastly, what's not hot in the stock market this week? Mineral resources, stock ticker code MIN. So let's get into the charts right now. Now, obviously, um, having a very rough time Whoa. with this stock. Um, clearly since, and, and what's interesting is, I mean, just, you know, as you cast your eye over these, the range of these bars, you can see that they're quite uniform, particularly as the stock's mm. falling, they kind of decreased uh, and kept a relatively uniform range. Now, what's interesting right now is the volatility has changed in this one, and it's changed to the tune of falling 50% in the matter of three months. And, you know, that hasn't happened for a very long time on this stock potentially through this period, which is not 50%. But even through here, you can see the nature of the bars didn't really change, although it did experience those falls. This is happening in three months. There is potential that uh, through this level here, if I just mark up the horizontal level, that there could be some support. But why it's not on my watch list right now, we always, or why it's not hot, is we always talk about trading on that confirmation. But more importantly, with mm -hmm. the volatility changing like this and, and continuing to extend further and further, these one month ranges are getting larger and larger. I think stay away and wait for things to change. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people see stocks like this and they go, it's cheap, I'll buy it. And we mm. see a lot of traders do this sort of stuff and they go, oh, it's cheap, I'll buy it. But to me, with just guessing at the moment, looking at that chart, it's hidden for 25 bucks. This is a stock, it's short. Mm. You wouldn't be trying to buy it to go long. And, and we see a lot of traders try and do that. They, you know, they see this stuff on their apps and go, oh, wow, it's cheap right now, I'll buy it thinking it's going to find support. But if we go and have a look at that chart, you know, we're seeing at the moment it's hit now about $38, is it? Something like that? Yeah. Um, $38, you know, and we're talking about this is a stock that was around $97. So that's a massive move. And, and I don't think it's going to stop till it hits around that $25 mark through mm. here. Now, I could be wrong, but at the moment, this is sick. And as I said, we will see people look at that low there um, or that major low that we've seen there, which is around $37, they're going to go, oh, well, if it's hitting that, I'll buy it because it'll find support there and start move up. It might find a bit of support there, 
But that's where a sucker's rally could happen, what I'm talking about. You took the words out of my mouth, and that's the point right there. I mean, how many opportunities through this down move here, people would have thought, okay, buy that dip, buy oh. that dip, buy that dip, buy that dip. How many times are you going to be buying that dip and consistently getting wiped, um, which speaks to what you're talking about? You need to wait for that confirmation. Well, there are three words I hate this hearing from people. What, buy the dip? Buy the dip, <laughs> buy the dip. And you see it on people on posts, all the stuff, you know, buy the dip, buy the dip. And I went... Dudes, not a way to trade, because when is a dip not a dip? And if you under don't understand that, then buying the dip, you'll get caught in stuff like that. You'll try and buy the dip, it'll go up for a little bit, and then it'll tank again. And, and really, it's about understanding how markets unfold and stocks unfold. And right now, this is high risk in my book, and we could get a bit of support. It could move up for a month or two months, and people will buy the dip only for it. That it's To me, it's, it's probably about 90% probable it's going to go to around 25 bucks. All right. So why try and trade against that? Go short it. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching this edition of Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. Now, remember to tune into the live Australian stock market show on YouTube from 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. Now, to find us, just type Wealth Within Live in the YouTube search. And remember to have your phone ready to call in live to speak to us so we can answer your questions. The number is 03-9290-9988. Or you can email into the show right now by sending your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now, if you want a copy of Dale's first book, you can still get it for free. You just have to pay the shipping. You can order it from our homepage, wealthwithin.com.au. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and thank you, Dale, very much for your excellent comments today. That's my pleasure, Phil. I mean, I really do look forward to it. I mean, it's great being back, firstly, um, but I do look forward to chatting with everyone tomorrow night on the Australian Stock Market Show right here live on YouTube. And if you do have an email or something you want to ask us, send the info at wealthwithin.com.au. Send your questions through and we'll answer them there. All right, we've got a great show coming on Tuesday as well. I don't so. even know what we're doing. Well, there you I'm go. assuming it's great because you've been organising it. <laughs> I hope so now, the pressure's on. But anyway, thank you very much, Dale, again. And thank you to all of you for watching for now. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.